So one of the things that can add a lot of interest to your iBooks titles is some kind of intro media. And what I'm talking about specifically here is a video. Now, you may not have a video editor, and you might not want to spend a lot of money on video. And that's what this tutorial is all about. Because for little or no money, you can create a pretty decent intro video for your iBooks project just by using tools that are already on your Mac or tools that you can easily get on your Mac. And I'm talking about using Keynote from Apple, which is Apple's version of PowerPoint, and GarageBand for a little sound effects. So let's look at what we're going to build in this tutorial. It's pretty straightforward. And I'm on my iPad here, and I'm projecting it in so we can record this. And I'm just going to tap on Unknown Title, and my title's going to open and play a video. So it's just a simple little video, and then it goes into the content, the chapter one table of contents. So again, this is, you know, not a huge blockbuster video, but it is something that adds interest, and it kind of gives your whole iBooks project a personality right from the very beginning. And it's easy to create in Keynote and GarageBand, like I was saying before. So let's go ahead and, and get right to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is start by creating the iBooks project. So I'm going to go over to iBooks Author, and I'll come up here and do a new file from Template Chooser, and I'm going to use the photo book file, the template there, and I'm going to go ahead and choose that. So this you've probably seen before if you've worked around with iBooks Author, and just to add some continuity, I'm actually going to use this picture right here as the background for my intro video. So I'm just going to select this. You can see the selection handles pop up here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that with the Command C, or I could also go up here and do Edit Copy. And one of the things that you'll find is if you're familiar with iBooks and not familiar with Keynote, they are extremely similar programs. And they work great together, and that's why this is a cool way to do it. So we're going to copy this into Keynote. Now, if you don't have Keynote, it is one of the best bargains that you can get just by going to the App Store and tracking down Keynote. It's always on the top 10 list, and it's only $19.99. In my opinion, the best $20 you can spend on presentation software. It is really a great program in and of its own right. So back here at an iBooks author, we have copied this now. And so we're going to go into Keynote, which I already have up and running. And we're going to say, let's do a new, new from theme chooser. And for this project, we're just going to do a black background and slide size. We're going to set at 1024 by 768, which is the normal resolution of the iPad. Now, you could debate whether this should be higher resolution. For this tutorial, we're just going to use 1024 by 768. It still comes out looking quite nice on the project that we're doing. So we're going to choose that and we'll get this first black slide. And you'll notice over here that we have an inspector which is very similar to the inspector in iBooks Author, for those of you who haven't used Keynote before. So the first thing we're going to do is just click on these boxes and delete them. We're going to leave a blank black slide here in the beginning because we're going to use that as a way to fade in to our video. So then I'm going to add a new slide, and I'm going to do the same thing, delete these things here, and then I'm going to edit paste in our art from iBooks Author that we're trying to match. Make this about 75%. I'm going to go ahead and stretch this a little bit. So I'm holding down the Shift key and going to the handle in the lower right corner. I'm going to click and hold and drag down to the right and just make that a little bit bigger so it fills the whole frame. Then come back in until I get the yellow alignment line so that it's centered and I've got my background now. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get some text in here and one of the things that will make your project consistent is to use the same font and let's see when we were building this before I think we were using all caps so let's go ahead and do that. I know from checking the font 
back an iBooks author, I can go back and do that real quick, that this font right here is Futura. Therefore, I'm going to go back into Keynote here and use Futura here. You can see that it's a very similar interface. And I'll make this, say, 96 point. And I'll position this just like you might do in PowerPoint if you're not familiar with Keynote. And I'm going to add, uh, go over here on the palette here under the graphic controls and add a shadow, make that pop out a little bit. And so now I have Photo Journey ready to go. And I uh, am also going to add a little bit more text here. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to edit copy or it's faster if you do Command C on the keyboard and then paste that or Command V. I've now I've got two versions of this. It's already in the font that I want. I want to make it a little bit smaller and just make it say by Larry Meyer. Bring that into position over here and these are the, the final positions that we want the text in. Next we're going to animate these two things. First, Keynote has a great effect, which is a lens flare, that we're going to animate with this. And so in the inspector over here, we have the build inspector, and we're just going to pick the lens flare effect for photo journey. Kind of works with the sun there, and we're going to leave it at the default 1.5 seconds. And we're also going to then work on this text, which we're going to build in which will be a move in and we're going to make that from right to left and you can see how the animation kind of previews over here we're going to make that 1.5 seconds as well now we want to have this automatically happen when we export it as a video so we'll go up here to the first slide and one of the things in Keynote the transitions between slides are set on the slide that is you're leaving. In other words, for a transition between these two slides, we set that transition with slide one selected. And so in this case, we're going to go ahead and say that we are going to dissolve into this background. You can see that. And we want to, for purposes of making this a video, we want to do that automatically. And we want to do that after a delay, let's say, of just a half a second. That's going to give the video time to load and then get into the next animation. And we want to do the same thing on these elements. Right now they're set to start a transition on click, but we want to make those happen automatically as well. So we want to automatically have that effect happen. And when we uh, actually were in transition here, let me back up a little bit. We don't want to set any transition here, so I'm going to go back and change that. What we want to do is set the build, and so make sure you're, uh, a lot of times you can get confused there, but what you want here is the build, the build, and lens flare already set, and more options is what we want to click. And we want to set down here, automatically after transition, a delay of maybe one second, and then it's going to be a 1.5 second duration and then the same thing here we want to set this to automatically after build one and we want to delay maybe of a half a second so when you're thinking about this whole build here you're really timing it out with these second settings these delay settings and the delay setting here and the duration setting here so right now if we add this up we've got a a transition here that we know is one second with a five second delay so that's one and a half seconds and then when we come to this slide we know that we've got a couple of effects here so we've got the photo journey text coming in for one and a half seconds after a uh, one second delay so that brings us up to four seconds and then this will be another half second delay four and a half seconds and then 1.5 seconds in duration so quick math there in my head six seconds for that 
So that leads us to how we get sound in here. And we want to have some little sound stinger, similar to commercials that have that iconic sound at the end, something like Intel inside or something like that. So I'm going to open up GarageBand to do that. And I'll just come down here, click the GarageBand icon. And GarageBand is a great little sound editor. For simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and say New Project. I'm going to select Podcast because that gets you out of all of the, the music settings and things like that. I'm not a musician, so this is a lot easier for me. And if you're just doing something like this with a built-in effect, this is easier. So go Podcast and Choose. And we're going to name this New Stinger. And we're going to save it to the desktop. That's going to open the GarageBand interface. And real quickly what we're going to do is don't worry about all these settings. This is very easy to do. I'm actually going to come down here in the lower right hand corner. I'm going to click on this loop icon and it's going to give me all of the built in sound effects, jingles and stingers. And I looked at this earlier. There are just different sting stingers in here and just as a way of uh, letting you know what's in here. There's some things like this. So you got different radio stingers and things like this. You have quite a variety of built-in effects, which gives you a lot of possibilities for doing something like this in iBooks Author because you have so many built-in effects. But I'm just going to use uh, Jingles, and I'm going to choose Cinematic and Piano Ballad, which is something that you might recognize from the beginning. I'm just going to drag this up here to the first track. It says uh, Male Voice but don't really even worry about that. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to make this very easy. So I've got the track up here in GarageBand. I press the space bar to play it, and I only want a little bit of this, right? I only want the first part of it. So let's go ahead and press the space bar. That's where I want it to stop. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and Command T for Trim. And that basically cuts this track in two. I'm going to select the part that I don't want and hit the Delete key. So now I have just this part of the song. And I hit the space bar to play from there. And I really want to have a little bit more of it. It's non-destructive editing, so I can actually uh, click hover over the end of this and and then click on it and extend it a little bit but you can see right here is where we want to start bringing the level down and you can do that very easily by clicking this little triangle for the levels on the track and then you've got this faded line here where we just want to come in and we want to click a control point here and then click another control point here and then click and hold and drag this one down so it basically will fade out it won't be so abrupt so that's that's a lot nicer and so we're gonna go ahead and save this and then share this out we're going to export podcast to disk which basically means we're going to save the file mp3 encoder musical podcast that's fine 128 kilobits per second that's fine go ahead and export that it won't be exported as an enhanced podcast don't worry about that just hit continue new stinger on the desktop and go ahead and save that and now we can get out of GarageBand, go back to Keynote, and just look for that file, which we have, which is uh, right here. And it uh, looks like we're going to have to uh, do a little moving around here of uh, a few things. Well, let's go ahead and insert. We can do it this way, too. Insert Choose. And from the desktop, we're going to hit New Stinger MP3 and move my inspector out of the way and insert. This is going to give us a little icon here that's not going to show up when we actually play this. So now we can test this and see how it's going to look by coming up here to the first slide and then hitting play. And you can see our delay, our nice lens flare, and the nice animation and the song fading out. So that's what we want. So I'll hit escape coming out of that and we'll go ahead and export this by hitting share and we're going to export 
and we're going to want to leave this at manual advance. This is kind of not lo logical in my opinion, but manual advance means it will use the automatic timings that we've already got set. You might be tempted to say fixed timing, but we don't want fixed timing. We want the timings that we built in. Full quality large, uh, include audio, sound files, and movie audio. We want that. And we'll just hit next. And we'll say that this is the new intro video. We're going to export that. You'll actually see a preview of the video as you're going. And so, you know, is it a precise video editor? Definitely not. But is it a quick and easy way to create a Stinger video for iBooks Author? Yes, I think it is. And so it's just that easy to export that. So now that the video is exported out, we will hit Command Tab to toggle back over to iBooks Author and come up here to Intro Media where it says Drop Movie or Image Here. And somewhere in here we have our Finder still working. We have our new intro video. We're just simply going to drag and drop it in here. It is optimizing the movie, which is something that is new in iBooks Author in the latest version where it actually optimizes images and video to the best size for the project. And so now that that is done, we have this ready to go. We've got our video in there. We don't have to change anything else about it. So now we're ready to preview. So let's switch back. Let's uh, hit preview. And as we do that, we'll switch back to our utility that lets us see the iPad here. And here we go. Brings up the cover. Plays the intro. Plays the little music bed and advances to the table of contents for the first chapter. So that is a quick look at how you can use apps that are already on your Mac or you can easily get for about $20 if you have to buy Keynote, how you can use them to create an intro media movie, an iBooks author, that will add interest to your project. It's as easy as that. So I hope you like this tutorial. If you do, tell everybody about it and we'll keep doing more. If you have an idea of other tutorials, let me know and we'll try to get them up for you.